Oh, what is going on, YouTubers? Uh, I think I'll chat over this kind of segment here for a few minutes. Um, yeah, what's going on? So anyway, had some time to work on this thing some more last night. Uh, the bumper is just currently sitting on here just for for lack for looks, lack of a better uh, thing. We're just experimenting with, with how this is going to appear or not. I don't know. Not 100% sure about the bumper just yet. I, I do like it. I think the tighter I try and push it in, the better it is. But what ends up happening then is that I start to lose a little bit of contact. So I probably want to trim on the corners. Um, I thought about just trimming right here at the, the vertical parts and not having anything here. Um, but we'll see. I haven't really fully decided on that. I was working on uh, headlights last night. I got those running. So those are now on. Um, and those actually worked out pretty well for how they got installed inside. Of course, see the wire is tucked up pretty neatly. Obviously, it's still floating around in the cab here, but I haven't totally secured everything through the body just yet. That's on the menu for today, I believe. Um, the next plan is to get these two LEDs that I dipped in red paint. I'm out of the red LEDs. I ordered some yesterday. This should be here, I think, tomorrow. So if this red dip uh, ends up being too dark, which I'm pretty sure it's actually going to work just fine. I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, I'll, I'll hook these up and turn the things on so you can see what it's going to do. But I think this idea is actually going to work pretty well. And I don't want the brake lights to be too bright. I don't mind how bright these are. You only really get that spike right when you look, right when they're pointed right at the camera. you know. But uh, I think aside from that, it's still not going to look too bad. And it looks great on this particular camera, at least from what I can see on the screen. So it's not bad. Um, yeah, and I think the details are real on this are finally coming together. I got some stickering done the other night, as you saw in the clips that I've put together here. And then, of course, I ran it around the garage last night. And I love how these tires look when they have just the slightest little bit of dust on them to kind of show off that tread pattern. And then that nice high contrast depth there with the rest of the black. I just think that's such a neat look. I really think this thing has come together, and I, I love how it's how it's shaping up. Really given strong to consideration to um, weathering it. I did buy two weathering kits that are around here somewhere, so I have the painting and chipping, and I also have the rust stain and streaking kits. I got those uh, a couple days ago, actually, when I picked up my new mat, which I still, like I said, I cannot find. I, for anybody that's watching this channel for the last couple of years, you know that I've had this black work mat that's had like a ton of stickers on it. I've lost it. I can't find it. I don't know where it is. Um, I lost it in my move. It's probably packed in a box someplace, and as soon as I find it, you'll probably see it back out here. But I do like this one. I like it. it's a nice clean surface. It's actually about twice as large as what I had before, maybe even almost three times bigger. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give these a shot. Oh, let me show you my idea for how I was going to do this. I don't know if I can really show you too much. You can almost see. Let me grab something to sort of point with. There's a tiny little pocket on this tail light assembly, which fits into the rear here. You can see I have one installed already. I haven't put the light in. I just did the cut work and everything and the fit work last night. So I kind of obviously wanted to be able to fit an LED in here and, uh, and still have everything obviously look the same and stuff like that and not just have like an LED poking out. And I wanted to check and see if I could use white. Uh, I wanted to see if the red was dark enough that I wouldn't have to dip or anything along those lines or not have to order new ones. Anyway, in the process, I figured out that I'll just remove the center part of this and cut the end off. And then uh, with a little bit more fabrication, filing, etc., cetera, um, pretty much able to, once that's all set, you're able to get the LED like nested inside of that thing. So. You can put this on from the outside and get that all set because it just slides right in. But once that is opened up, then you can just, you know, basically just pop that LED right into the middle of it, secure it however, and then I'm going to run the wiring up to the front to be able to plug in. Um, the answer is a hard no on interior on this. I do have it. It's sitting around here somewhere. I weighed it before. I think I told you guys it's like a 100 and like 198 grams or something crazy like that. It's an amazing amount of weight. 
and I don't want to put that in here. Um, the D90 was tall enough and, and heavy enough that it really threw this thing off quite a bit, and uh, it kind of affected how it functioned in some ways. I loved the look of it, and it was a really fun truck to run, but it always had like the top-heavy problem because it's a D90. Anyway, this now kind of brings the center of gravity down a little bit. This thicker plastic top kind of puts a little bit more of the weight up, but I've taken all the, the metal out from pretty much the midpoint down, and I don't want to add any other weight. I'm probably going to relocate the battery up to the front once everything is all settled, and I know where everything is going to sit. And uh, what else? Probably, you know, after driving for a couple days, I'm still experiencing a little bit of contact down here in the very bottom corner. And I'll maybe, I might take out just a little bit more, but I'm running out of room to keep this whole corner piece intact. And I don't want to lose anything that is going to affect how this kind of looks in conjunction with the rock sliders and stuff like that. I want to keep all of that the same because it really kind of is maybe not so much on the front but the rear is definitely important but maybe not so much on the front it's important for this to kind of function as how the body is held on to the uh, chassis so i'm not going to do too much more with that i just might take a hair more out and like i said the front probably needs a little bit more fitment uh adjustment there and you know i'll i'll deal with that as the time comes Unfortunately, these top two are not light buckets, and I really kind of wish that they are. It would be really very easy to go ahead and just drop a couple holes in there and then find some micro size LEDs and, and fill those. Um, it's detail work. I just don't want to go through, I think, on this. I love it as it is, and I think with the, with the, with the headlights and the taillights are going to be uh, more than sufficient to be able to keep this thing looking pretty cool. Um, I did throw the front plate on and as well uh, I plated the back with the factory plate stickers that are on there. RC four wheel drive in the back window. Our good old friends Scaled Builder Skilled prop to Matt for everything that he does. Uh, that sticker had to go in the back window just because I still have some of those kicking around. Uh, I decided this is actually from a pro line. This is from the uh, the the 73 Baja Beetle, uh, so kind of a little props to the Proline um, stuff, so that's actually a graphic from that kit that you get when you do that build, and I think this, this might be from that as well. So the numbers and the labeling on here are from Proline, and DF Goodrich stickers are from RC Four Wheel Drive, of course, because the KR3s are on. Uh, kicks Rock Sliders, Injora links, Injora axles, uh, OGRC drive shafts. Uh, I do believe this has 14% overdrive up front, if I'm not mistaken, because I kind of had this set up uh, a little burly for uh, for the D90. And then, of course, Triel linkage and everything up front. Uh, Emacs servo, uh, 55 turn barrage motor running on stock electronics and I, I love the thing. Oh, trail shocks in here, I think, right? Trail shocks in the back and yeah, racing stuff for uh, Mini Z up front. The yeah, racing shocks have a bunch of travel and I really liked that I was able to utilize the closer to factory locations and got even somehow more articulation out of this thing than what it had before. So based upon all of that, I'm going to run it as is, and that's pretty much the update. I'm going to switch over here to doing a little bit of work, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and if you have any questions, comments, anything along those lines, concerns, uh, please feel free to share them. Somebody posted something uh, not long ago about this thing not being able to turn, and while in some ways I would sort of agree that it kind of limits the fact that it won't have you know some crazy steering angle. Uh, it still does just fine on trailing and everything else and everything that I've driven on up to this point. Um, you'll see. Um, and also, too, uphill stuff, you know, uh, it probably will be a little bit more unloaded, so it has a chance to kind of steer a little differently. It's not placed quite as much weight on there. But darn, I, I tell you, this is just such a cool-looking little build. Thanks so much for the comments. Uh, really appreciate all the positive uh, response that this one's got. And, uh, and I'm just so completely happy with it myself. I, I like it. I, I'm really pleased with how it's going. So I'm glad you guys are too. Stay tuned. There's going to be more on this one.